Let's go back to the Zoom machine and say hello to Biggie Boy. What's up, Charzinho? How are you? Good. How are you doing, Ariel? Yeah. It's been a while. Yes, it has, my friend. It's good to talk to you. Thank you for doing this. I know it's a very busy day over there in uh, in Las Vegas. You're the underdog. Did you know that? No, but that's fine. I think you're going to be my underdog of the week, Charzinho. I think I should I should say officially you are my underdog of the week. What do you think of that? Every week I pick an underdog, I feel like you're the guy. This is your fight. Okay, I think then that's it because I'm, I'm being the problem. Yeah? You like this matchup? Um, yeah. Yeah, I like this matchup. It's uh, more of a striking guy. Um, not out of my, my comfort zone. Still, I think he's going to try to wrestle me because I know he has some jiu-jitsu. I see him do some submission um, back then in the past. So, yeah. But I like this matchup. What did you think of his performance against uh, Tom Aspinall back in in March? Um, I, well, I I didn't expect to be so so soon in the fight. So yeah, that was surprising. You thought he would be able to hang a little longer, last a little longer? Yeah, because I know him as a tough guy. So uh, it was surprising that that the fight uh, was 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 finished so fast. Uh, they give him a lot of opportunities in the main events. They they seem to really like Alexander Volkov. Do you, do you feel like it's it's warranted? I definitely think it's warranted. Um, he's a big name. He has uh, he has his name. He does some good things for the sport. Yeah, and he's a tough guy. You do great things for the sport. Uh, you you are a great ambassador for the sport. You were supposed to fight in April, and then we find out on the I think it was the Friday before, right? The day before the fight, it was you versus Marcin Tabora. The fight was off. Tell, what happened? That was that's correct. Uh, I think for Marseille has some some stomach problems. So maybe ate something or something else. I don't know. Um, then uh, Lou called me and said, uh, "Bigs, I got some bad news, man. I think the fight's off. Marseille is really sick." And then I go, "Okay." First, I didn't know how to react because it's one day of the fight. Everything is done. Yeah, it's just and let it out and then that's the news so it's sad but the other, other, on the other side it's yeah the only thing you can say is uh, get well soon and, and, and it can happen to anybody right how did you feel though like I mean you're getting you're, you're peaking right I mean this is everything's building to this moment and then the rug gets pulled under you what did you do after you got the news yeah, I was I wrap up get back home and I deal with myself it even gave me a little bit more time to prepare uh, for what's coming, and then I got the news of Falkov, and yeah, hmm. even a big, uh, good matchup. It's a, it's a main event. Now, did you stick around for the event? Uh, I stick around, but I didn't go. Why not? I, I don't know. I don't feel like going for that one because I supposed to fight there, and then yeah. I'm sitting, on, so it felt, it felt a little bit weird. So I just stay in the hotel room. I was the fight at home at the hotel, but that's it. You don't want to be there because it would be too tough. You were supposed to compete. Correct. Did they pay you for your troubles? Yeah, yeah. The UFC uh, reimbursed me for all my troubles. Okay, so they took good care of you. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right. Um, that was supposed to be in, in an arena and a crowd. Now you're back at the apex, smaller cage, no crowd. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Um, I have my my, th- my way of thinking about it. And then on the other side, I'm there with a coach. You can hear everybody clearly, but still is exciting with crowd, with the fans, everybody cheering for you. So you feel much better. But now it's at the apex, but it's fine with me. Smaller, smaller octagon. So we're going to be there. There's not much time to move. And I don't think he's going to stand there and bang with me. But you don't think so? No. I think it's going to be more on the outside, uh, play with its reach. Right. Yeah. Probably what he should do, considering how tall he is and how long he is. Tallest opponent you've ever fought? Yes. Yeah, he's going to be the tallest, tallest guy. Did you bring in anyone to kind of emulate him? That's the good thing about American Top Team. Um, we have a really tall guy in American Top Team, Victor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even taller than Volko. And I got a good preparation with him, and yeah, to approach the reach, especially. So, 
I think we are a good side for this one. So you train for this one in Coconut Creek? Correct. All right. Um, and so did you come from, how? like, uh, when's the last time you were back in Sur Suriname? Suriname, I was there in January somewhere. Oh, wow. It's been a while. Yeah. It is. I've been going back and forth, like, after fights, of course, going to see my family, mom, dad. But but your home now is in Coconut Creek? No, it's in, uh, yeah, close to Miami, 10 minutes from Miami. Oh, yeah. I train in Coconut Creek. Oh, yeah. Do my camp. You like that Miami life? South Beach? Yeah, chill. Like Memorial Weekend, I went for a sightseeing, drive, uh, drive around with the family. It was really busy out there. Yeah. I feel like this shirt that you're wearing, this fits in in Miami. It does. The king of the jungle. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, last time we saw you was against Curtis Blades. Didn't go your way. What did you, what did you learn from that? He's a tough guy. He's one of the top guys in the division. What lessons did you take away from that fight? I think I was I was too hard on myself about thinking what he, he was doing in the fight. Like, would he go for the takedown? Would he go for the single leg? Would he do the, the double leg? And that takes away my my ability to to do what I do, what I do. Like, you know, throw punches, throw kicks, throw kicks. And then yeah, it kind of slowed me down. And then end of the fight, it was like, it was fast because it was a three-round fight. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was disappointing. Of course, you don't like to lose. It was a lesson, but still. You felt like you were just getting going. You 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 were used to those 25. You wanted the 25 minutes. You wanted the uh, the extra 10. Definitely. Definitely. I don't think he could have go so long with me. Because I was putting the pressure, I was getting more loose later in the rounds. Yeah. How do you feel about the state of the division right now? It's a, it's a little bit up in the air with Francis being gone. Uh, there's some big fights coming up. There's this one. There's Tom and, and Curtis, uh, Tai Tuivasa fighting in France against Surreal Gan. But the, the champion isn't around, and we don't know what's going on with him. How do you feel about the state of the division? Right now, I'm not focusing on the champion because we know he, he's been injured yeah. and he got surgery. But then the concern, the most biggest problem is what's going to happen because an interim title is coming. Mm. So who's going to fight for the interim title? And some names being up in the air. And I disagree with that because we are the fighters that keep the division up and running. I understand a part of it that people is the fight that people want to see. It's going to be a good fight. But I think it's unfair compared to us who was keep, who was keep fighting during COVID, during all the years. It's three years. And and then you sit down on active on you know you know active and then you just jump in for a title shot. Are you referring to John Jones? Uh, one more time? Yeah. You're John Jones and Steve. That, that that that's the matchup they're trying to make, is what I see. Yeah. And you think that would be unfair if they made that for the interim title? Yeah, com it's unfair compared to us. Like we've been fighting, so we should get a chance. Right. I think nobody should definitely get a chance to be good blades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. I don't know against who, but he's there, and and and, and he was winning his fight. Who do you think wins that fight if they do it, Stipe and John? I don't know. I don't care. But I love John Jones. I love his style. It's nothing. It's nothing with that. Yeah. But I think it's gonna be awesome. But I think John Jones is a little bit younger. Maybe the favorite goes. I I say sixty forty John Jones. Right. But you think it would be more fair he just fights a non-title fight as his introduction to the division, and if they do an interim, give it to someone else. Definitely, definitely. definitely. You think Francis hopefully. comes back? Hopefully, I doesn't think it, but hopefully. If I was him, I got this opportunity. I, I don't. I don't come back. I'm already champion. I'm BW, I'm the champion. I see it all. Um, I get a bigger opportunity. Why should I go back? Oh, so you wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go back? No, I'm just surprised. Wow. And the opportunity you're talking about is that is that Tyson Fury? Yeah, that Tyson Fury fight is. Uh, that's a lot of cash on the line. Sure, but that's just one fight. What does he do after that? I don't know. Yeah. I think you got to figure it out. You uh, see what you want, what you want to do with your career, what stage of uh, your career you are. Look, I'm 34. I'm thinking, okay, right now, I'm the strongest in my in, in age. 
So I'm moving forward, I feel good. If I got an opportunity like that, why should I go back? Right. You think he wins that fight if they do it with the uh, the MMA gloves, but boxing rules? Ah, yes and no. Boxing is different. Boxing is different. If you get tired, so what? When you get when you gassed out, you gassed out. That means you can't do nothing. All your experience are gone. Mm. It's like you being a punching bag. That's what I what I believe is is, is when you when you gas out, that's gonna happen. It's gonna be a matter of time, a matter of time when you should go down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So ultimately, you would lean towards Tyson. Yeah, I think so. Boxing wise, right? Yeah. Would be, MMA is different. Yeah. You, you can take him down, wear him out on the ground, and then get him back up. All his arm, all his arms or or limb, he can punch. That's different. But boxing wise. It's a different game. Well, honestly, it doesn't. It doesn't sound, at least to me, like uh, the Stipe fight, based on what I'm hearing, is a done deal. And because of those other guys are booked, and it seems like John wants to come back soon. What about the idea? Jarzino goes in there on Saturday, knocks out Volkov, call out John Jones. That's a big opportunity. Will he do it? No, I think I'm a risk. You don't think he'd do it? No, I don't think he'd do it. Why not? Is not for the title. He was waiting so long to get in the heavyweight division for the title. Mm. So then now I comes up, I come up, call him out, and he does it. I don't believe he did it. I don't think so. But it's a good opportunity for me. Sure. I, one of the greatest fighters that ever the heavyweight the the UFC ever seen. Well, someone's got to fight him, and no one's calling him out. I don't hear anyone talking about him. Maybe they forgot about him. Yeah. Spiders. That's what I'm saying. You get on the mic on Saturday, you call at least it creates some buzz. I definitely do that. All right. Go for, go for, call him out. What do you think? Yes. I'm telling you, Jardinho. I, I should be giving you more advice here. You call him out. You win the fight. You finish Volkov. You say, all right, enough is enough. You want a title shot in this division? No, I've been here. I've been fighting through the pandemic. I've been going out there. I've been carrying this company on my back. John Jones, you want a shot at the belt? You got to go through me. You got to go through Surinam. You got to go through Biggie Boy, all right? You want to play with the big boys? You got to go through Biggie Boy, my man. I agree with that. Let's go. All right. Uh, how do you think you win on Saturday? I don't think it's going to be, my opinion, I don't think it's going to be a, a long fight. It, it doesn't go to five rounds. Any mistake, I knock him out second or first round. Yeah. Okay, nice. Underdog. See it. And then you laugh at all those people who have you as an underdog. Really? I love it. All right, Jarzinho. Good luck to you, my friend. Thank you for the time. Thank you for doing this. And I can't wait for the fight on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All the best to you. And uh, hello to that guy over there. I see another guy. His head popping through. Uh, hello to him as well. Jarzinho Rosenstrike, the pride of Suriname.